this evening is dedicated to the memory of David Decay, who was a prominent lawyer at the time. When he decided to give up his practice, and that practice was in conjunction with a good friend, Mr. Miles Fitzpatrick, and dedicate himself to the newspaper business. It took me by surprise because at the same time, if Miles could remember, we had taken over the Royal Bank Trust. David and Miles was asked by the Royal Bank, after they were giving up their shares to the Guyana government for one dollar, that they wanted a private institution or organization or persons to take over the Royal Bank Trust. The reason for that was simple. This trust company had a number of trust companies and trustees that were highly, highly trustworthy. And that cannot be passed on to any and other person. I was approached by David and Miles that if I could join it, I will join it, which I certainly said yes. And we started, we brought in when we stole William Golding Stone and started the company. And if I could record it, it was less than a little over a year. David came one afternoon and said, look, I want to go into the full-time newspaper business. I'm resigning this board. Will you take it over? That was for me. I said, David, you know, it's short notice. But I said, don't worry about it, I'm not you can not it. Anyway, it so happened, Miles had given me notice already that it's only a matter of maybe a little longer time before he also comes out. So I was left with the trust company, Royal Bank Trust, which was renamed Trust Company Guyana, which I'm glad to say is still in existence today, and it has multiplied several fold in the sense that it handles about 20 times more business than it did in the past. Of course, we have to increase the share capital by bringing in some share. So that's how David was so carried away with the newspaper business. Not carried away. He felt that something had to be done to get a new beginning in Guyana because the past had treated this country so badly. And the newspaper, a good newspaper could change the whole scheme of things. One that was not afraid report what was happening in the country, and how people lives were changed. And David became that dedicated newspaper man. He had to go through a number of trials and tribulations, including one that he fought to the extreme, I would say. And he took it up as high as it could have gone, and that is when Mr. Jagmeo then President, no, then President Daniel decided he's going to cut off all advertisement from Southern Blue. And that ceased, yes, indeed, I think for 18 months. David fought the case. Finally, Mr. Daniel had to, or President Daniel then had to give it. Despite the fact that this is the former President. Mrs. Janet Jagan had asked him to relent. And he refused even Mrs. Jagan, the lady who had put him there. So these are that happened, but it shows you the merit of the man, the man who was determined, dedicated to bring about change. And we did have a great deal of change as a result of the South. So this afternoon is dedicated in a way to the memory of David Cairns in the launch of the Moray House Trust. 
from my pops, I don't know for what reason I was asked to chair this afternoon to see you. I have a fourth chairperson right here, and we have a four-person board made up, but it's not a board of trustees. And the trustees are my Mr. Joe, no Major General, I have to be careful. <laughs> Retired Major General Joe he simply saw it. And there, and Isabella, and Joe. So these are the trustees. So if anything should happen to this trust, I don't know if people realize, and males will tell you, trustees are personally liable for all the liabilities. <laughs> he didn't tell me that, but I know that. So we gotta watch it. We have to ensure this place is managed and a very efficient, effective manner. I know it's not gonna produce any big results, but it will do things that will help the country, help people. Let's say like uh, launching of books. We launched the first book here a few months ago, and it was under that he was here in the country and we were able to get him to come. And this is where he launched it. But he had a copy because his books didn't now arrive. It so happened I had sent and bought five of, of his books for distribution. And I had still had three at the time. I brought the three books and that's how that outstanding writer of that, uh, he's not so much a writer, he's an historian an educator and a man that has written a classic in himself and that is the life of Sir John Campbell. And who is that man? Clem, Professor Clem C. Giraffe. So that was, you could say, almost the launching. Of course not the launch, but what a first major event that was here. And this afternoon we have another launching of uh, a major general who was then a boy who was going to talk about this book. But I'm not going to say much about that now. I'm just going to have the program. And I think my bit is finished. And I will now ask my co trustee, one of the sponsors, along with Isabel, the Murray House Trust, to come and give her this. Madam? dedicated to bring about change. And we did have a great deal of change as a result of this afternoon. So this afternoon is dedicated in a way to the memory of David Carey in the launch of the Moray House Trust. From my perhaps, I don't know for what reason I was asked to chair this afternoon to see you. I have a quote chairperson right here, and we have a four-person board made up, but it's not a board of trustees. And the trustees are my, Mr. Joe, no, Major General, I have to be careful. <laughs> Retired Major General Joe Singh, he simply saw it, and there, and Isabel, and Joe. So these are the trustees. So if anything should happen to this trust, I don't know if people realize, and males will tell you, trustees are personally liable for all the liabilities. <laughs> he didn't tell me that, but I know that. <laughs> so we gotta watch it. We have to ensure this place is managed and a very efficient, effective manner. I know it's not going to produce any big results, but it will do things that will help the country, help people. Let's say like uh, launching of books. We launched the first book here a few months ago, and it was under 
that he was here in the country and we were able to get him to come. And this is where he launched it. But he had a copy because his books did not arrive. It so happened I had sent and bought five of, of his books for distribution. And I had still had three at the time. I brought the three books and that's how that outstanding writer of the era. He's not so much a writer, he's an historian, he's an educator, and a man that has written a classic in himself, and that is the life of Sir John Campbell. And who is that man? Clem, Professor Clem C. Gerard. So that was, you could say, almost the launching. It wasn't the launch, but what a first major event that we came to. And this afternoon we'll have another launching of uh, a major general who was then a boy who was going to talk about his book. But I'm not going to say much about that now. I'm just going to have the program. And I think my bit is finished and I will now ask my co-trustee one of the sponsors along with Isabel the Murray House Trust to come and give us this. Madam, 